Later on BBC Two, a special on the total collapse of the British economy. But first, more hilarity from the American comedian Kelly Monteith, as he helps himself to a big slice of your TV license fee. I know. We'd all like to thank you for giving this reception to the Save the Whale campaign. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's a subject that's dear to our hearts. I mean, we both believe that... Excuse one... me, darling. Could I have a glass of champagne? Certainly. As I was saying, one of the most important things that we can learn from nature is, of course, um... <laughs> Balance. <laughs> Does it never happen in the movies? Hi again, my name's Kelly Monteith and welcome to episode three of Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories about the Kelly Monteith Show. Now that little scene you just saw was a cold opening and had no connection with anything in the show, okay? Uh, we did a lot of those, we did a lot of cold openings that just, boom, they came up before the show started. And uh, we finally abandoned it after a while because it became very, very difficult to think up a, a brand new cold opening for, for every show that was uh, short enough and funny enough to, to put in there. When I first got into show business, I was working nightclubs and I think possibly one of the motivations I, I did to get into business was the fact that I could sleep late. I didn't have to get up at 7.30 in the morning or seven o'clock, I could sleep till one o'clock, two o'clock, and then go to work at night. And because I, I, I love to sleep, I'm very difficult to wake up and that's what this scene is kind of about, actually it is about. Um, when I'm married to Suzanne, played by Gabrielle Drake, and her uh, ritual of trying to get me up in the morning. Kelly, well, I'm so Hang on, Hal. Sorry, Hal, left the gate off and he nearly got away from you again. <laughs> now, about the party tonight. No, you can bring whoever you like. <laughs> and your ex-wife? Yes, sure. <laughs> oh no, it's just informal, Hal. You tell her. Okay. Fine. See you about eight tonight. Bye. Ah, come along now, Sleeping Beauty, up here with you. Come along up the steps. There we are. Now you sit. What time did you get to bed last night? Uh, Tuesday, Baron. Three o'clock? Oh, I say for crazy. It was clean for fun. Oh, yes, I can see you cleared up. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yes, Baron. If uh, she can come with Tuesday, Baron? Uh, no, you drink your juice first mm. and then you can have your coffee. There's a vision by reason. Same juice that we always have. Oh. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> Drink your coffee. Mm. There. My good one. Morning. <laughs> Welcome to the land of the living. You call this living? <laughs> I got a terrible taste in my mouth. Well, mouth tastes like the bottom of this flower vase. <laughs> well, I wish it was that easy for me to wake up. One sip of coffee might bring me out of my coma. But um, I'm very difficult to wake up. My poor mother, when I think back, uh, had a hell of a time getting me up for school. Uh, she tried everything, uh, short of pouring boiling water on my genitals. Um, well, she did that once, but I long, long since forgiven her. Kept me out of gym for a year. You know, when I grew up in the Midwest, uh, in, outside of St. Louis, Missouri, the television would go off relatively early, but on weekends they always showed old movies. That's why I'm so influenced by movies or have so many recollections about old movies. And one thing I always noticed about those movies in the 30s and 40s, especially in the 40s, was every time you saw a guy, he would have a suit, a tie, and a hat. No matter what he did, suit, tie, and hat, always. And that's what this next scene is about. So this is our little take on the um, costuming of the, uh, of the 40s movies. Check it out. <laughs> Johnny! Judy! Joe! 
Tommy. Gee. When was the last time? June? July, 44, in a gin joint in Jersey. That's right. Oh, that joint was jumping. And you had that jazzy jacket with the oh, giant... Oh, Judy, I've got to... Johnny, you're joking. Joey's in the jewelers. Well, dump the dope and... Johnny. I'm sorry. Jack the John and we'll... That's better. Take a jaunt in my Jeep. <laughs> meet me later. Where we always used to meet. You mean... Johnny. Judy. Oh, Johnny. My joints are all jelly. I've waited so long. So long. Why did you jilt me, Judy? Johnny, it was Jimmy. Jimmy? I thought it was Joey. <laughs> that was after Jimmy. Who was after Jackie? Who was after Jenny? Jenny? Judy? Johnny, I told you I waited so long. Oh, Judy. Judy, I just... Johnny, you're so jittery. Are you in a jam? I've... I've been away. Not jail, Johnny. Jail? No, Judy, the jungle. Japanese? In January, the Jerry's. Oh, it was awful. Every time I think about it, I get the heebie-jeebies. First it came from the left, then it came from the right, then it came from the middle. Pretty soon they were attacking from all sides. Oh, Johnny, those Japanese have got you jabbering. Japanese? These were G.I. hecklers. <laughs> it was the worst camp show I've ever done. Gee, I felt like a jerk. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Judy. Let's junk all this gibberish and let's be like old times. Let's... Let's go for a swim. Let's go for a swim. <laughs> You know, there's a couple of things I find interesting about that scene. Number one, we looked for a manhole cover that was round, and I believe we shot this in Bournemouth, um, which is a little coastal town in, in, uh, in Britain, and all we could find were square manholes. Now, I don't think anybody, and I've never seen one in the United States, a square manhole cover, um, but that's all we, we could find. And of course, after we shot it, every place you look, we saw um, round manhole covers. The second thing about that is when we went into the ocean, I expected the water to get deeper as we went out. But it, I, I don't know if it's that way all the way to France, if you could walk over to France through the, through the uh, English Channel, but it was the same level. I don't know how far out that goes before it drops down, <laughs> before it gets deeper. But we ran and we ran and we ran. Now this next scene, I want you to pay attention to the um, production values. When I say production values, is how well um, the set is and how well the props are and uh, the people. Uh, BBC spent a lot of money on this show. And this is a scene where we're at a dinner party, um, Gabrielle and I, and her dress is caught on one of the legs of the table. And of course, in my desire to help her out, I, well, you'll see what happens. <laughs> all the props and the beautiful set they had there. I mean, that's an expensive, expensive scene. <laughs> now this next scene, it goes right into the fact that uh, I'm at a party and I have a bad back, which is kind of interesting because I recently had back surgery, so it kind of fits. 
but um, if anybody has ever had a bad back or something that's out of whack in the back, you don't want to tell anybody that because they always seem to have a fix for it. And that's what happens at this party. Hey, how come you're walking so funny? Uh, it's... What's the matter? You're getting too much for him. Oh, no, he's fine lying down. He hurt his back jogging. Suzanne, mm -hmm. what did you say that for? What? Now everybody's going to want to try and fix it. Oh, yeah. Bad back? <laughs> Where does it hurt exactly? See? No. Um, so... Is it down here? No, it's... no, it's fine. It really is. Just yeah. a little pain. Oh, oh you, you know what? Oh. I could fix that for you. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. I have a man over on Harley Street. Ah, you don't want to waste your money on those quacks. Daryl knows all about bad backs. He's a wrestler. Yeah. You've probably heard of me. Attila the Nun, the superior mother. <laughs> Tell her the nun? It's a simple matter of realigning the dorsical vertebrae. Oh, no, no, I'll show you, no, mate. No, no, right. Here. Oh, yeah. 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 Good as new. Oh. Well, I reckon you've earned that drink, Daryl. Reminds me of that job you did on Genghis Cohen, the kosher killer. Remember when he had you all balled up like an egg roll? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, listen. Killy? If I can drag you away from your impersonations for just a moment, he does a wonderful Quasimodo. <laughs> this is uh, Dooley Tenbury. He's a fantastic photographer. How are you? How do you do? Is uh, something wrong? No. Oh, no. no, he's just got a little trouble with his back. Suzanne! <laughs> Bad trouble, eh? When you no. come to the right man. No. A friend with my old regiment had a similar kind of problem. Back kept going out on him. So did his wife, for that matter. <laughs> she was the best regimental mascot we ever had. Beat a goat any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's another, another story. <laughs> we had this wonderful sergeant major. Yeah. He had the best bone cracker in the whole business. Oh, really? <laughs> he just grabbed your arm huh? so oh. and... Yank! Oh, yank! Oh, I say, I made a funny. A yank for a yank. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Julie? I've just given this yank a yank. Oh, oh you poor, poor no, man. No, 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 no. It's all right, yank. This is my wife, Heather. She's a nurse. Oh, yeah? Does it hurt badly? Uh -huh. Are you in terrible pain? Yeah. Oh, and have all these naughty men tried to fix you and hurt you instead? Yes, they hurt me. They hurt me. Oh, you poor thing. They didn't know how to do it, did they? No. Oh, no. Well, I'm a nurse, and you just relax. Oh, yeah. Put your head on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. And have a good cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this way and smile. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> Kelly, you remember Simon, my tennis coach? Hello, oh. Kelly. Oh, I... I've seen some kinky positions, but this is ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> Simon, you'll have to excuse him. He's just hurt his back. Uh... Back trouble? Why didn't you just say so? I have a foolproof cure. No, no, it's based on the no. ancient teachings of a Buddhist monk. No need to no, worry. Really, I'm... I picked it up and I played in the Dalai Lama Grass Tennis Championships oh. in Tibet. Ah. Just get this off. Oh. Just lie down. Oh. 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 Just for oh. Just Excuse me, can you turn him over, please? Oh. 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 Just get foot up here. Pass me oh. the sweet, please. No. What? No, I guarantee you this will stretch muscles you didn't even know you had. Still angry with me? Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. I really am. <laughs> you were quite right. I never should have mentioned your back. It was a party go, though, didn't it? All right, I can see you don't want to talk about it. We'll discuss it in the morning. <coughs> oh, by the way, those are my legs. Not really. I don't know whose legs they were. Probably one of the production assistants uh, that we <laughs> used his legs in that. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed these scenes. Um, we'll be back again next Friday for more clips from uh, Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>